All right, so if you caught my review of this one, this is a mini laptop from GPD that I bought. This is a 10.1-inch mini laptop that has gaming features, obviously the triggers and the uh, j the whole joystick controls and so forth. This has been a champ. This has got pretty much everything but the kitchen sink in terms of features, I.O., 2.5K display, pen support, gorgeous display, great keyboard, Great everything. This has been my one of my favorites for 2024. All right, the build quality, fantastic gunmetal design, right? So what about this one? I teased this during the in my MacBook Pro video, and I when I did the live unboxing, people were asking me about this. This is the GPD Win Mini 2024, and this is a seven inch display on here. And as you can see, beautiful. It is a glossy display. It's a bright 1080p display, 314 pixels per inch. Um, this thing is pretty, pretty awesome. Now, again, you get the joystick controls, their Hall Effect joystick controls, the D-pad, the touchpad, and a membrane style type, uh, chiclet style keys that you can do to thumb out a password or an email here and there. All the I.O. is on the back, and it's got some really good I.O., including USB 4.0. You can connect to an external GPU. I did that, of course, and it worked pretty well. And pretty much everything in a mini, mini laptop you want. Now, I also looked at the Mac Mini, and you might say to yourself, well, why would I get a Mac Mini when I can do something like this? I can connect a monitor, keyboard, and uh, the, the uh, mouse, of course. This is the same thing. I can do the same things I can do with a Mac Mini, but more. I can actually game on this. Yes, this is running the AMD Ryzen 7 8840U. It's got the 780M graphics, so you can play all your favorite games on the go just like you can with an ROG uh, Ally or whether you get the Legion Go or the Steam Deck, this is going to be the same type of thing. You got your L1, L2, R1, R2 buttons. You've got some programmable buttons. Again, the whole joysticks and all that. So this gives you more functionality and you'll pay about the same as the Mac Mini with the M4 Pro that I did, although the Mac Mini comes in cheaper if you go with the base version, but you can't do many of the things that this can do, like being a mini laptop on the go. We're gonna get into why I think this thing is pretty awesome and I highly recommend it here for 2024. I bought this with my own money and it's staying in my bag. We're going to find out why. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is the GPD Win Mini 2024 coming up. And before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know I'm not being paid or being sponsored by GPD. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. GPD is not getting copy approval. This unit was purchased with my own money. This is not a review unit provided by GPD. And for those wondering, I did reach out to GPD for more information on the product, but they did not respond to my email. All right, so let's find out what we get in the box here. Uh, spoiler, I've already opened this up, but I repackage it to show you what you get. You get the unit itself, and then you also get uh, some documentation here, warranty information, I would assume. And you get a 65-watt USB Type-C charger and a USB Type-C charging cable, and that's it. Now, at first glance, $1,235 is a lot to pay. It's more than what you'd pay for the ROG Ally and, of course, the Lenovo Legion Go and other things like the Steam Deck. This is definitely more money, but you are getting 32 gigabytes of RAM, you are getting two terabytes of storage, and you are getting some very good input-output or I.O. on this. So there is some advantages here to going with something like this. I'm a big fan of the form factor. I've been using this for about a month now, and I got to tell you, I really like like the way this feels in the hand as far as gaming and as far as other things are concerned. So if you're looking at something like a Mac Mini where you have to provide your own display, keyboard, mouse, and all that, everything is baked into this unit. So it is a handheld gaming machine. It's a full-fledged window machine. So you can use it with any of the Windows applications, full x86 compatibility. All the games will work, although you'll have to play with some of the settings. But I will say that the form factor here is what sold me. So if you're going to look at something like a Mac Mini and that, of course, is very limiting in a lot of ways. This gives you more versatility in pretty much the same kind of size. When you look at them head to head, when you compare the size, you'll see you're not really sacrificing too much here with this ultra portable mini laptop. All right, let's get a measurement of the weight with just the unit alone. You're looking at 537 grams or 0.537 kilograms. 
and that would be 18.9 ounces. So pretty light for what it is, although it has a little bit of density, right? So let's put it back into kilograms and with the charging cable and the charging adapter, 0.719 kilograms, and that would be one pound, 9.4 ounces for a total travel weight. Not too bad. And as I mentioned earlier, plenty of ports, plenty of I.O. here. On the back, you get a USB Type A port, a micro SD card reader, a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. You get your switch that goes between the mouse mode and the gaming mode as far as the controllers. You get two USB Type C ports, one of which is USB 4.0. That allows you to connect to an external GPU. I was able to do that. Worked very well. You get your L1, L2, R1, R2 trigger buttons on the back as well. And when you open the clamshell up, you'll notice the two controllers. They have the whole effect joysticks here. You get your touchpad in the middle, which I thought was very responsive. You get your D-pad and all that stuff. So all your traditional controller buttons and everything are there. You get programmable buttons as well, start menu buttons as well. And of course, you get the membrane-style keyboard. And I found out thumbing out emails and passwords is fine. I wouldn't be typing the next great novel on it. No touch typing here as far as the keyboard is concerned, but this is a handheld after all. So if you want to do an extended email or write a long document, I would attach an external keyboard, like a Bluetooth keyboard or via USB-C or whatever, and you will be able to connect it here and get your work done. So a lot of versatility using this as a mini PC or as a mini handheld for gaming and stuff like that. Now, GPD has a really good service video on how to get inside this mini laptop in order to swap out the SSD. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. I think they did a pretty good job there. Now, they're using the smaller form factor, the M.2 2230, and we've been seeing them a lot. You can find them on Amazon, pretty good deals, and I'll leave some links in the description below on where you can find one. Of course, uh, swapping it out yourself means you can save some money. Now, as far as the reads and writes on the two terabytes that I have here in my unit, uh, certainly fast enough, which need this mini laptop mini handheld to do although of course it always could be faster in my opinion but certainly fast enough here and i like the fact that you can swap it out and they do partition it into a c and a d drive for those wondering so you can see the reads and writes there now as far as the memory this is 32 gigabytes of memory and it is running in dual channel mode not upgradable by the user but i like the fact that this little portable handheld has 32 gigabytes not something you can get on some of the other handhelds at least not the mainstream ones and then as far as as the wireless, you're looking at Wi-Fi 6 and a Bluetooth 5.2 combo card. Not Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 7, but it still worked fine. I had no issue with the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth for that matter. Now, this has a 7-inch display. It's a full HD resolution, 1920 by 1080. It's an LTPS native landscape display. It also has a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, 314 pixels per inch. So I don't think you need to go anything above full HD here, 1920 by 1080. It is also a bright display, 431 nits in terms of the standard dynamic range. Actually, 430.5. Let's round it up. And then it's got 120 hertz refresh rate. So very smooth, very fluid scrolling as far as that is concerned as well. Well as gaming, that is something we want. Certainly welcome here. And it's got very good coverage of the color gamut. It's got color accuracy. It's good contrast, good white point, good black level. Overall, a very good panel. You can watch movies on it, although it is a small display, of course. It is seven inches, but you can connect to an external monitor if you want other features or more screen real estate. And of course, I would connect to a monitor and keyboard. Now, here it is next to its bigger sibling, the GPD WinMax 2 that I reviewed here for 2024. They share the same processor, the AMD Ryzen 7 8840U. It's got the same graphics, the Radeon 780M, but they do have some differences. Of course, that one has a 10.1 inch 2.5K display as opposed to a full HD 7 inch display as we have here. Uh, obviously, more full size keyboard than this one, so you can sort of touch type on that one, although it is a little bit cramped, but it is definitely doable. So, for bigger documents that you need to type out, that is more preferable. But of course, these are two very different type of devices. One is really more of a handheld gaming, although you can do a lot of that on the WinMax 2, as I showed you in the video, but of course, it is a bigger form factor, it's heavier, and of course, I love that all-metal gunmetal design there, but of course, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. Now, this little handheld here certainly has excellent build quality on its own, and I really like the display quite a bit. 
All right, let's talk performance. And as I mentioned earlier, this is running the AMD Ryzen 7 8840U. It's got eight cores, 16 threads. We've seen it before. Radeon 780M graphics, the same exact chipset that we saw on the GPD WinMax 2 we have here. So very similar, single core, multi-core performance, a little bit better on the WinMax 2. And I think that's to do with the thermals, the fact that it is a bigger chassis for more thermal headway. I think that's going to be the difference in terms of the numbers here. But overall, I think they're pretty similar. And especially especially for the fact that this is a 7-inch smaller form factor. Pretty good single and multi-core performance. The Radeon 780M certainly did very well in this form factor as well. Now, Cinebench 2024, we're seeing very similar results when it comes to single and multi-core. 100 in terms of the single core, 702 multi-core. Very similar to what we got on the WinMax 2, so not surprised there. And when it comes to the 3D Mark graphics here with the Radeon 780M, the results here are very similar in terms of time spy, in terms terms of the fire strike wildlife extreme you can see the numbers there certainly better on the winmax 2 and again i think that chassis gives more thermal performance and i think that's what the difference is there now as far as gaming you can play around with the settings and then you'll have to play with them to get the right settings but they are playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles and i had no problem playing say something like nba 2k uh 2025 and of course that is a pretty graphics intensive of course i was able to get in the four maybe 50 frames per second, which is pretty good in terms of a 1080p gaming experience. So I thought that was pretty good. But you got to play around with the settings. You could also do emulation on this. You could also play cloud gaming on, say, the um, Xbox uh, Ultimate Pass and stuff like that. So, you know, you could have a lot of options here with this very portable form factor, that's for sure. And when I ran the Time Spy stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load, it got a score of 92.7%. Not quite the 97% passing, but pretty close. So it detected a little bit of thermal throttling, nothing to be concerned about. And as far as surface temperatures under heavy load, it never got overly hot where the keyboard is or where the touchpad is. It can get around 37, maybe 38 degrees Celsius on the back where the heat is being dissipated, where you plug into the USB-C port. That's where the heat will be. And again, away from the body. So that's good. And everything is on the back there. So again, you're not going to feel the heat unless you put your hands behind there. Maybe where the triggers are, you may feel it a little bit, but nothing to be too concerned about. And there is a hot spot on the bottom, about 48, 49 degrees Celsius. But other than that, this really stayed relatively cool throughout, even when you're gaming. Now, as far as the fan noise, you will definitely notice it, especially when playing a game. It can reach around 49, 50 decibels, which is definitely noticeable, but not the worst I've ever heard. But definitely the fan will kick in to cool this down. There is no doubt about it. Now, when it comes to battery, I got 9 hours and 12 minutes on the PC Mark 10 Modern Office test. That's a mixed-use test. You can see anywhere from 8 to 10 hours, depending on what you're doing in real-world usage. Of course, everybody's use case is a little bit different. When it comes to gaming, you're looking at anywhere from about 2 hours to 2 hours and 15 minutes in terms of battery life. It just depends on what you're playing and the settings, of course, that plays a part in it, how bright the display is. So there are a lot of factors that play into that. But overall, pretty decent battery life here on this ultra portable gaming handheld now they do supply you with a 65 watt usb type c charger in the box and that of course does support fast charging okay let's get a sound test on the left is the gpd win mini 2024 and its bigger sibling on the right the gpd win max 2 also very good so let's uh, get a sound test and of course don't expect it to be macbook like these are smaller type devices but i think obviously they bring something pretty unique and i would say for the form factors these both have very good speakers and by the way on the bottom it says dts x audio and this one also has dts x audio so that is a higher fidelity type sound tuning and so forth so let's give them a listen Thank you. 
So this is a setup that I take with me on the go with this Win Mini, of course, and this is going to be the 2024 edition. And as you can see here, I got a few things here. So this keyboard is a Bluetooth keyboard. It's a Bluetooth keyboard that folds up, comes with this really nifty stand. It's from ProtoArc, and I'll leave a link in the description below. This all folds up, and then you could put this part in here, fold up the keyboard, and this, of course, comes all with this uh, foldable keyboard and boom, you're ready to go. But I like it because this is gonna give me options with not only my smartphone or tablet, but with a mini laptop like this. And as you can see, I have it connected to the Espresso Display 17 Pro. I will have a video separately on this. I'll do a review of it. It's a mobile monitor that comes with this really nice pro stand that you can stick magnetically to the back of the tablet or the monitor, I should say. Now the monitor is a touchscreen display and here it is connected to the espresso display on its stand. And as you can see, I can use the pen with the display. I can use the finger, obviously pinch the zoom, all that stuff works really well. This is a great combination to take with you and it won't weigh you down. Although there is a little bit of weight on this. They do have a 15 inch version. This is the 17 inch pro version and the stand itself has a pretty nice hinge that allow, oops, don't do what I just did, but it allows you to put it in different modes. You can even put it flat and you can actually get it uh, working pretty well there. So uh, a lot of options when it comes to this display and I can just, you know, use my finger and, and use the pen and draw something or sketch out diagrams and so forth. There is a, a program called Jot that they have that they will use with this, so pretty good. And again, I'll have more of this in a separate video, but this has been a great option to go with. I wish the magnet was a little bit better. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not doing something right, but uh, you just gotta be a little bit careful with it. But overall, I think it's been pretty good. See that hinge wants to go down a little bit, but that's my fault, I think. Uh, but there you go. There you can see all the different things you can do with this. So I would like I like it a lot. Now it is a glossy display. Again, I'll have a full video on this coming soon. Not sponsored. I bought this with my own money, but a great pairing with this little mini PC here, little laptop here. And it's a great travel companion, both of these. All right, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the GPD Win Mini 2024 here? And of course, I will say the high performance out of the AMD Ryzen 7 8840U does the job. Integrated 780M graphics does the job. USB 4 support for eGPUs. It's got great 7-inch Full HD touch display, upgradable storage, very good I.O., 32 gigabytes of RAM, 2 terabytes of storage as an option here, which is amazing. Hall effect controls and, of course, full QWERTY keyboard at your fingertips now the negatives of course the controller is a bit uncomfortable without the optional grips that they sell more expensive than other handhelds especially the gaming handhelds for more mainstream offerings and the high-pitched fan noise when you're gaming can get a little bit annoying as i showed in the video but other than that i think this is a really solid choice especially for those that need a mean need a mini pc with gaming options here in terms of the controls as well as connecting to an external monitor, keyboard, and mouse. So you get a lot of the same things as a Mac Mini, but more functionality when it comes to gaming. That's a win-win in my book. So overall, I think they did a great job here, and I look forward to seeing what they can improve on in next year. But this is a very solid choice as we round out 2024.